Hello, everybody. My name is Serrano. Thank you for joining us. I hope everybody is doing as best as possible, taking into account the world situation. Um, I will cover the work that we have been doing within the 96 Boards team on auto wear and related topics over the last year. Uh, why doesn't it move? Okay, yeah. So a little bit about myself. So my name is Servando German Serrano. I'm a software applications engineer within Linaro. And my background is on different autonomous systems, uh, ranging for, from cars, uh, quadcopters, submarines, etc. So okay, so yeah, one year ago in Bangkok, in Connect, uh, myself and, and Phil Gray, we had a couple of sessions which are available online on the resources from the Narrow Connect. Basically, we cover a bit of an introduction to AutoWare and improvements that we're working on within the AutoWare repository. So just as a little bit of recap, the, what we covered in, in as an AutoWare introduction session, we gave a little bit of a, a background of AutoWare.ai, which we can see an image on the left hand side. And we gave a little bit on AutoWare.auto, which was pretty much since it's in its infancy and it has just now growing uh, as we speak with uh, members of the community working on it. The third project we was AutoWare IO was uh, not started yet officially, but we have uh, quite an introduction today as well on it because that's uh, going forward. For the sessions uh, covering those, just go online to, to the Narrow Connect resources and you can see myself and Theo just covering everything. I think they are like half an hour each or something like that. And then on the different improvements that we were working on uh, from Linaro side, so we started adding unit tests and using G-Test as a framework to try to address some of the technical debt within the AutoWare software stack, AutoWare AI in this case. So as part of that, we added a minimal set of tests and actually I started asking uh, contributors to add test to the new PRs that were being submitted, part of our, of our job. But from that, we uh, set up the initial GitLab CI infrastructure, moving from Travis CI due to some shortcomings that we had on, on Travis CI. And in order to make sure that the unit tests were being run, but since there were no tests at the moment, at the start, there was not an issue, but so far, we things have been improved quite a lot. And the GitLab CI is running, also on the current repo move to, to GitLab instead of GitHub, or though it's likely to move back to GitHub in the, in the future. But we had a, a bit of a, some drawbacks within the GitLab CI. And basically, it was no automatic trigger of pipelines from the, from the PR, from project ports, and as well only x86 runners, which is being addressed now through Amazon Web Services as well. So we had some credits, and we had ARM64 native builds as well within GitLab. Apart from that, we updated the demo documentation, which was based in videos at the start. And so we had a little bit of a down, down deep there into making sure that all the instructions can be, can be followed easily, just reading other documentation and copy pasting. Now, moving on to the what's new. So taking a little bit on autoware.io, and which 96 words automotive will be a part of. Autoware.io, arose as an interface project for AutoWare. Since AutoWare AI and AutoWare Auto were focusing on the software stack, AutoWare.io is that kind of bucket with for all the other things. So proprietary sensor drivers or proprietary code that some uh, companies would like to share and integrate with, with AutoWare. Driver for the sensors, uh, computing units, all the different hardware reference platforms that we want to build and want to that are going to be part of, of the AutoWare Foundation, the community with different tools, uh, interface, and test frameworks. And as well, it, as I said, it would allow any company to integrate within AutoWare. Let's say we have a company and they are developing a closed uh, localization uh, software or piece of software, and they don't want to release their, their source code, but they, it integrates seamlessly with, with AutoWare, they could potentially release binaries to be used by companies or demo binaries within the AutoWare I.O. project. As part of the AutoWare I.O., uh, now we have the AutoCore PCU. So AutoCore is a, it's a member of NPC boards and they have released this perception computing units uh, not that long ago. 
and naturally, uh, as I put there in the link, that's a ROS discourse announcement. So they made a public announcement on the on the PCU. And if you follow the link, you can actually have a look at the different hardware that is uh, built on it and what they are using, and as well all their offering on software that comes across with the with the PCU. The PCU is a part of the reference hardware design for AutoWare, and as a heterogeneous platform, it has a MCU and MPU architecture with the MPU from NXP. One of the nice things uh, about this is that actually you can plug in hardware accelerators via the PCIe, such as the Google Coral TPU, which was presented earlier today as well, and to be able to, be able to run all the neural networks and that sort of things. One of the things worth mentioning as well, uh, comparing with other offerings from, from other companies and what people are using regarding industrial PC and that sort of approach, this comes as 10 times cheaper than the than other other alternatives as well as it's auto grade so you could potentially and that's the target use this as a development platform but as well push that into a product afterwards rather than try to work around all that sort of issue now in order to prepare for this what we have been doing since the pcu is quite new um part of the 96 boards we have a range of socs and the different boards that we have that we have available so we have been doing some groundwork in preparation for the PCU and another hardware that will come in the future. So as we can see here, we have some of the 96 boards that we have available and we have started to work on, a Hi 970 from High Silicon, RP3 Keys from, from Qualcomm, the Ultra 96 from Silence, and AI ML platform from, from Arrow. And now the next of the work that I will show has been sponsored by, by Tier 4, which is the where actually AutoWare AI started from has been focused mainly in future-proofing the work on, on AutoWare and the different deployment that we can achieve on the multiple SOCs. So we have done a couple of things, starting with real-time and ROS2 enablement. So for this, uh, to start with, and due to constraint on time and, and, and the effort, we have started on the HiKey 970 and the Dragonboard 845, so with the RP3 kit. And the, the purpose of this work, which has been replicated about uh, on, on both boards, has been enabling, enabling the real-time kernel. And after exploring different avenues for real-time, we've landed on the Brilliant RT patching, which seems to be the easiest way forward, although it's not hard real-time. We can start developing some real-time applications using it. In order to do so, for example, for the Hiking 970, and worth saying that all this work is public and is available as part of the real time and ROS2 blog series within the 96 uh, boards website, we started uh, preparing the board uh, using the Bionic Builder tool to, uh, to get Ubuntu 18 with kernel 4.9.78. Following that, and using Mani's instructions on enabling different uh, kernel for the Hiking 970, we updated the bootloader and actually as well upgraded the kernel to 4.1478 in order to match the preempt RT patching. So after cross-compiling the, the kernel, we just built it and we, we in order to check that the real-time kernel was enabled, we went on and installed ROS2, installed ROS2 dashing, where hard real-time is not available, but there's some initial support and we started working, looking at the pendulum, inverted pendulum demo. One of the quirks that we had to work out at the start with the pendulum demo was that by default, we needed eight gigabytes of RAM. And if you guys are familiar with the Hiking 970, there are only six gigabytes of RAM available. So we had to go deep into the code and figure out a way on how to reduce that. But after doing that, we could install a, by default ROS2 comes with fastest DPS DDS, but we also installed Cyclone DDS, and we managed to run the Pendulum demo with these results. Sorry. So for the demo, we had one kilohertz update loop and a maximum jitter allowance of 30,000 nanoseconds. So as we can see in both pictures, the dark dotted line is the maximum jitter allowed, and we can see that both DDS implementation, we had a couple of runs, and we haven't had the time to identify why, but at the start, you can see that both DDS implementations comply with the requirement for the testing, apart from the starting point, which we have assumed that is due to memory, initial memory allocation, those sort of tasks, but both of them, 
for the maximum GTR, they both stay well below the maximum allowed. So once we completed this, this effort, we decided to go ahead and do, replicate the same on the Dragon Board A45C. In order to prepare this board, what we did is we flushed the, we flushed the default in our Debian Buster user, uh, just following the 96 board documentation, and upgraded the kernel using Linaros Qualcomm landing team kernel. So basically, we downloaded 5.2 from the from the Qualcomm landing team uh, tree, patched the premium RT kernel, and flushed it. One of the hurdles that we had to investigate with this board, because Debian Buster is not supported by ROS2, since they support uh, Ubuntu 18. So what, what we decided to do was actually install Docker. So we installed Docker on the, on the Dragon board and started and put together a couple of images to use on the 96 boards Docker Hub repository. Some of them just the default images that come with ROS from ROS. So we took those images and added a Linaro user. And then on others, we also pre-compiled Autoware, Autoware AI, Autoware Auto, and Auto, and a ROS bridge, which I will cover later, to be used for the demos as well. So these images are a native for ARM64. So you can use this with these boards or any ARM64 boards that you, that you might want to use with. So following that, what we just pull the ROS dashing image. And then the same issue we had before. So for the Pemdulu demo, we needed eight gigabytes of RAM, but there are only four available on the on the RB3 key. So what we did, we just modified the code on the Pendulum demo to limit the, the amount of RAM required. Afterwards, we spent a little bit of time looking into setting up the memory looking for conditions and permissions for the Docker container. But following on those steps, we can see here that we had sort of the same results that we had with the Hiking 970. Both DDS implementations, Fardas DPS and Cyclone DDS, stay well below the maximum jitter for the for the inverted pendulum demo, which means that we can start developing sub real time applications on both boards and for ROS2. Afterwards, the next piece of work, and uh, which started as a new blog series, which we called Autoware Everywhere, was actually at the main effort to prepare for different SOCs as part of Autoware.io. So what we try to do is deploy Autoware or sub components of Autoware into different 96 boards SOC. We have a couple of options, either from source or Docker, depending on the board, we, we explore both and we cover both in the, in the blog post. And then within Autoware for Autoware.ai, we took a subset of components due to the hardware constraints. So if you had multiple boards, you could run all Autoware, apart from the neural networks as at the moment, which you could do in the, in the PCU instead. And for Autoware.auto, the state that it was at when we did the, the blog post was quite new. So there was quite a little bit only available. So if you go now and try to replicate, you will have a lot more functionalities and usability in, within the other world of the other repository. And then what we also cover is bridging both software stacks. So let's say you want the better software from other world of auto, but there is a um, there's some functionality within other world of AI that we would like to use. So we also showed as well how to bridge both stacks together to make the best of both worlds. So for this a little bit cover what we did within autoware.ai. So we ran the Rosback demo, but just as a, as a subset of the, of the tasks we did within the demo. So also investigated how to run it headless. So instead of using the GUI that is available within autoware, the, we put together the way of actually doing it manually and just from, from the terminals. And due to memory constraints, for example, on the hiking 970, we could only just run the mapping, sensing, and localization. So we can see here a little bit of what we can see. So we used a different laptop for the visualization bit. And that's just running the ROS back, uh, launching different uh, launch files within it. And we can see the here for the localization that what we expected on the right-hand side terminal was the NDT matching to say, OK, which was a success. Then for autoware.auto, what we did is actually build as well instead if you don't want to build it from source, so you can just pull the auto, the auto, auto compilation, the auto Docker image that we put together for, for the 
or 96 boards that's available on the on the Docker Hub. And what we did is just we redid the 3D perception stack demo that is available as part of the auto documentation. And we just adapted the steps for a headless run, but also we used a separate laptop for the for the visualization and we connected the board and the laptop via Ethernet to avoid any delay if you want to connect via Wi-Fi because there's a lot of data moving around. So we can see here what we did. So that's running on the hiking 970 for the 3D perception stack demo, which is actually replaying a uh, Velodyne pickup file with a, with a point cloud, naturally doing some uh, reduction on the data points on the right hand side on the bottom for the voxel grids. And then finally, as, as we said, what we try to cover with uh, bridging both software stacks together. So we use the ROS1 bridge to connect, which connects ROS1 and ROS2. And since AutoWorld.ai is built using ROS1 and AutoWorld.auto is built using ROS2, so we use this bridge to link both stacks together in order to actually showcase the scenario, what we did is we used the Velodyne driver from AutoWorld.auto, which is the same one that we used here on the, on the, on the demo, but use the NDT mapping capabilities to build a map using the pickup uh, file from, from Velodyne. So this is the output. And if you try this, it's likely you will run out of memory. So it takes a lot of computational capabilities to actually build a map, but you can at least showcase the how things work. And this is a, that map on the on the right is actually built using the Hiking 970. So you might not be able to run the full uh, Pika file to and build a full map, but there is the, the bits and pieces on how to put things together and how to start doing things on both things. And that's it. I think it might be quite early. So thank you all for listening. If there are any questions, please shoot. Yes, that was very efficient, Savando. We do have some questions. So uh, first question, have you compared Xenome uh, versus RT preempt for real time? Hopefully I pronounce that. So Xenome was one of the things that we tried uh, patching, uh, naturally using instead of RT preempt, but I ran into a lot of troubles trying to get it working on the ARM64 hardware. And uh, so we, we opted for RT preempt rather than, than Xenomai. So we had uh, kernel panics and other things. So I, I wasn't able to actually run uh, Xenomai on the on the hiking and 70, for example. OK, and then the next question is, uh, did you see difference in RT performance between 4.14 and 5.2? So for 4.14 and 5.2, we actually didn't compare both. So the main issue of using two different ones is because uh, the Hiking 970 was built on 4.9. So we upgraded that a little bit to 4.14. And then for the Dragon Board 8.45, we use 5.2 as a base because that's what comes from the Linear Qualcomm Team uh, tree. So we haven't made a comparison between both on the same board. Okay. Um, wait, let's see. Let me just check YouTube as well. Yeah, Andreas, for four five point four, that's the next step. So I'm trying to. I'm. I was working. I was waiting to get it working on the AIML board as well. So that will come. We should. That should come in the future. Okay, great. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, if people do have more questions, where's the um, what's the best way to send those to you? Do you want to share your email address here? Or? So the email address uh, myself is on the first slide of the of the presentation. Okay. And as well, if it's any auto -wear related question, feel free to join the Slack community. We also have the different posts on Ross Discourse or contact contact class at 96 words and we'll try to figure out the best way to, to, to solve it. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Vando. Thank you for having me.